Today, I need to hopefully remove this wall from this renovation property that we're working on at the moment. It's a 1930s property, and this wall here is solid brick. And what I want to cover on this video is just a few kind of tips and tricks and things that go through my mind before removing a brick wall and a few important checks that you need to do to make sure that it's not a load bearing wall. Hi folks and welcome back to what is now day 11 on our kind of 1930s renovation project that we're working on. If you want to see everything that happened on days 1 to 10, head over to the member zone. But as I promised, I wanted to dip in and out of a few kind of challenges that you're likely to run into on renovations like this in older properties in the UK. And hopefully you'll find that sort of thing useful. And as I say, today we've got this weird brick nuke to remove from this room. I'll go into this in much more detail over on the member zone, but basically it looks like this used to be an old coal bunker here. And if you remember when we first bought the property, this was all panelled up. There was a window at the top. It was really, really badly, uh, well, the brickwork on the outside was frankly shocking. There was no inner leaf and there was basically just wood cladding all around here. It was an absolute mess. It was very easy to take out because nothing had been properly attached to walls or anything. At the minute, we've got this temporarily blocked up because I've taken down that shocking brickwork on the outside which I will redo at some point. So there'll be a future video coming up of my very dodgy bricklaying skills, but they'll be better than whoever did that job on the outside. It definitely wasn't a bricklayer who did that, by the way. But I suspect it was all done when this bathroom was put in. So, I don't know, bathroom fitter, maybe? I don't know. It could have been a DIY job, who knows? Either way, this would have been a coal bunker. And on the other side of this wall would have been kind of probably a larder, I think. And that's probably why it's all been built in brick. You often find that in older properties, the kitchen is often surrounded by brick walls. I think to try and keep the place cool, or certainly to keep the, the larder area cool on the other side of that wall. But I've seen that in a lot of older properties where the kitchen area is surrounded by brick walls that aren't necessarily load bearing. But we're gonna turn this into a proper room and this is just eating into this room far too much. So if possible, we've got to get rid of this. And as an added bonus, hopefully I can reuse the bricks to brick up this gap. So the first thing that I want to check before we go anywhere near demolishing this, because if this is a load bearing wall, it's going to really complicate matters. We're going to have to have steel working and all sorts of things to support the upstairs joists, the floor joists that are above here. The first obvious thing to check is whether or not there are any joists sitting on top of this wall. Now, I know the joists are running in that direction. I'll show you how I know that in a minute, but all I'm gonna do is take a, a ruler and just see if I can run that over the top of the bricks. And I think I can. There doesn't seem to be anything actually touching the brickwork. I'm actually hitting the plaster on the other side there. If I had a steel ruler, I could hit that with a hammer and it should pop out the other side. Um, but I've left all my steel rules at home. Now we do have kind of a mystery bit of wood here, but I think that's just a filler strip to hold this plasterboard up, I think because it's a bit unusual. You see that bit of wood there is just kind of, it's not really attached properly or anything. So I think once we get this wall out, we can just take these little fillets of wood out. The ceiling might fall down, but the joists shouldn't shift. But that is the first and easiest thing to check is anything sitting on top of the brickwork and it doesn't appear to be. Folks, I just need to interrupt for a second because obviously it's that time of year again and Christmas is rapidly approaching and I just need to tell you a couple of little things. We have restocked on tape measures. We now have a full stock of new design, five meter and eight meter tape measures in stock. They're a brand new design. They're really quite funky. If you go onto the website, you can see all the new things about them. I'm not gonna go on about it in this video. And then finally, if I can ask one massive, massive favor, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, because I know the vast majority of you watch my videos, but don't hit the subscribe button anymore because no one uses the subscribe button these days. 
but it really fills my world with joy if you subscribe to the channel. So if you can do me a massive favour and hit that subscribe button, it doesn't cost you anything and it just means that you get to find out about new videos when they come out and it makes me very happy. Thank you, back to the main content, bye. Now one important thing in all of this, before you take a single hammer to a brick, get a structural engineer involved for a second opinion. The only reason I'm doing this myself is because, as I say, I've done this a lot of times. I know what to look out for, but don't go mucking about with this if you don't know what you're doing. Get a structural engineer involved, they'll pop out, they'll not charge that much for a site visit to just have a quick look and just sanity check everything that's going on. They'll have a quick look at like your joist sizes and stuff and make sure they're all up to spec. But with all that being said, my approach next would be to have a look from above and see if there's anything obvious going on that will kind of shed a bit more light as to why we've got a brick wall down there for no like good reason. Because at the end of the day, brick walls take a lot of effort to build. And even back in the 1800s, 1900s, you got lath and plaster walls. They would use stud walls if they could get away with it. Generally, you're using brick walls for a good reason. But having said that, in our property, which was 1920s, every single wall in that property is solid. Although all the upper walls are made of cinder block, which aren't really structural anyway. It's just another kind of alternative to stud walls. Anyway, front of the house is in that direction. Back of the house is in that direction. The nook is underneath us here. It kind of comes out from that side wall and it goes in that direction. And as I say, under here would have originally been kind of a pantry or something like that. Coal shed was underneath this side on the left. And by the way, there is evidence down in the room below that there was a brick wall going all the way along here originally, and that would have formed the back of the coal shed. But that's been taken out probably when the bathroom was put in downstairs. But anyway, all I've done is I've marked out on the floor roughly where that wall is. And if there was any easy to lift floorboards around here, I would now be lifting them to have a look at you know, is there anything obviously sitting on top of that brick wall? Where are the joists running and all that sort of thing? Now we do have a joist running down here. And by the way, if the floorboards are running that way, the joists are obviously running that way. And you can see all the nail holes in the floorboard. So you know there's a joist directly under here. So this joist is sitting on top of this wall. And you can tell that when you walk on it here feels considerably more solid than here. Hopefully you can kind of hear the difference, but it's kind of hollow here and kind of solid here because that is on top of that wall. But that doesn't necessarily mean the wall is actually doing anything. It's just kind of an added benefit. But again, just to be on the safe side, I'm not gonna go to the trouble of cutting floorboards around here. We've got a floorboard further up here that's already been cut and I should be able to lift that up because I want to have a look at, is the joist here any different to all of the other joists in the room? I very much doubt it is, but if this is a thinner joist, then that is something that's going to influence what we're going to need to do. So there you go, X marks the spot. This is the joist that might be resting on top of that wall. And as you can see, that joist is exactly the same size as all the other joists. It's not particularly great how much has been hacked out of these to put the central heating in like, but uh, yeah, that's one of them things. These joists are 60 wide by 170 deep, which by my calculation, I think that makes them seven by two and a half. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments what you think. But the point is, is that they're quite beefy joists. And also they've been laid on, well, what is more or less 400 centers, 410 centers, which is 16 inch. So as I say, not particularly great that they've notched the joists, but at the end of the day, that was probably done about 30 years ago and there's no sign of any movement. I'll talk about joist spans in a minute, but there's one other little really quick thing that we can check just to sanity check things. And that involves coming into our very sunny living room here. And the interesting thing is this room kind of runs parallel with the room where we're gonna be doing the work. And this runs all the way from the front to the back of the house. You've got the front of the house there, 
back of the house there and there is no magical supporting wall in the middle here to support the joists that are also running that way and just to sanity check that the joists are running that way because it would make more sense for the joists to run that way between that supporting wall which is brick and obviously this brick wall here that would be a much shorter span for whatever reason they've run the joists that way but here is the bedroom above the living room this is pretty much exactly the same size as the living room back of the house there front of the house there as you can see floorboards run that way joists are going to run perpendicular to the floorboards so the joists run in that direction you can see all the joist nail holes going all the way down and if we check the joists in this room, I'm expecting them to be exactly the same size. And they are 60 by 170 again. So it's exactly the same size of joists. And we know this is going the full span of the room to 4.5 meter span. I mean, that's quite big. They could have run the joists, as I say, across this way. And they would have only had a 3.4 meter span but for whatever reason they've done it like that. So the next thing I'm gonna have a very quick look at is some joist span calculators and I'm gonna have a look on this one here and we're looking based on C24 timber, which to be honest, these are probably better quality than timber that you get these days anyway, but we're looking 170 by 60. So what's the closest? We've got 63 by 170, that's pretty close. We're looking at 400 centers and it does say the maximum span really shouldn't be anything more than about 4.37 meters we are 4.5 meters so it is slightly over so we are kind of pushing the limits of what you can get away with here but at the end of the day the property is 100 years old there is no sign of any movement the ceilings aren't bowing or anything like that i think with it being an upper floor your loadings on your upper floors are never that particularly high anyway but yeah i think ideally if you were to recreate this situation you would have gone for 63 by 195 rather than 170 so you would have gone for a slightly deeper joist and that would have allowed a span a safe span of up to 4.9 meters as i say we're very very slightly shy where a 4.5 meter span really 4.4 is the longest that you should go on that and by the way i'm just using this website here timber beam calculator sorry about the flicker on the phone timberbeamcalculator.co.uk but you use whatever you want so then the final thing to do and it's always a bit unnerving when i'm wielding a hammer but this is the wall that we want to take out. This here and this here. This is the inside of that nook. And the final thing that I would check, and I would only generally do this once I'm absolutely certain that it's safe to take the wall out because you don't want to kind of cause unnecessary damage. But what I'm going to do is just knock a hole in the ceiling and kind of see from here if anything's sitting on top of this wall. I'm pretty confident nothing is at this stage, but we're gonna have to kind of sort the ceiling out anyway. So let's smash this up a bit, see what's going on, and uh, we'll then be absolutely certain that we're safe to go ahead and take this wall down. By the way, yes, do wear eye protection if you're doing anything like that. Usual PPE rules apply. I just end up kind of booling in like a bull in a china shop as per usual. But as you can see, there is the top of the brick wall, but that bit of wood on top there, it's not really doing anything. I'm not entirely sure why it's there other than just to fill the gap. I don't know if you can see that, but it's easily kind of moving about of its own accord so that bit of wood ain't doing now it and it's only about an inch thick anyway interesting how much coal dust there is up here because of course that, that would have been the coal cupboard on the other side of here and they have actually put insulation above it which i'm genuinely impressed by 100 year old insulation very interesting on this property we're just running into the cusp of when some of these kind of new fandangled things like plasterboard and 
cavity walls and insulation and all that sort of thing are just kind of coming into their own. But yeah, top of the wall there, random bit of wood on top that doesn't seem to be doing anything. And then we've got this joist over on this side, hopefully you can kind of see it there. But although that looks like it's resting on the top of the wall, the top of the wall is there and that's just kind of like filled in with plaster and muck on top of that. The joist isn't really touching the top of that wall. If I hack a little bit more away, you'll be able to see what I mean. I'll do that and I'll come back to you. And there we go. That kind of confirms everything I was saying before. We look like we are good to go. As I say, always double check with a structural engineer if you're not 100% certain. But there is one more little tell here that we've got, which is uh, quite interesting. 10 points to whoever can see it at the moment. I'll tell you what the tell is in a minute, but you can see that bit of timber that's running across the top of the wall there. Literally no idea what that's for. It's probably just a bit of filler strip or something. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. As I say, it's loose anyway. But yeah, the final giveaway, I don't know if you can see, but that is the edge of the plasterboard of the adjoining room there. And you certainly wouldn't put any plasterboard between a brick wall and a joist if that wall was providing any kind of meaningful support. So that is another kind of confirmation for me that this wall is doing nothing other than providing a cool space for food back in the day and also some insulation against the outside where, as I say, it would have been the coal bunker on the other side of that, which would also explain the insulation above the ceiling as well, which I'm quite impressed that they actually bothered to do that. So folks, I hope you enjoyed that. If you've got any additional tips for removing what could be a load-bearing wall, which we've now established isn't a load-bearing wall, if you've got any additional tips, post them down in the comments below. As I say, top number one tip, get a structural engineer involved. Don't take chances with this sort of stuff because you don't want your house falling down. But as I say, I'm 100% confident now that it's safe to take this out. I also know as well because I've seen other houses on the street have done it as part of their building works and they haven't had to put any steels in or anything like that. So I know it's safe to go. But the next stage now, it's not as simple as just kind of taking a hammer to this and hoping for the best. This is a very, very solid wall. It's a much stronger mortar mix than has been used in our property, which is a 1920s property. 1930s, I don't know. We've definitely got a stronger mix here. These bricks are very, very solid. Sometimes you get that older mortar that you can just more or less kind of scrape it out, but that ain't the case here. This isn't gonna move without a bit of a challenge. And I think I'm gonna save that for a future video. So hopefully you found that useful. And if you wanna see what I'm gonna do to actually remove this wall and the process I'm gonna have to follow because it's gonna involve various cuts and things, then do hit subscribe and you will see that in a future video. Do head over to the member zone if you wanna see more of the detail of this whole renovation. As I say, we're up to day 11 in the member zone world, but I think this is only part two of the public videos, if I've got it right. Anyway, folks, as per usual, look after one another, be nice to each other, and we shall see you next time. Tatty, bye.